And this would be this would be uh, this is uh, will be written up uh, in the book uh, by William. Um, these these arrangements are very familiar, so he has references for this. So once again, let me uh, let me show you uh, here. Uh, this is G two. This is a group G two. These are uh, weights of uh, th these are uh, roots of G two. You see simple roots of G2, these two things in white here. And this is the affine root. Yes? So if you take this one twice and this one three times and you add it to this, you get zero. Now, uh, this is D4 from which uh, the G2 comes. Yes, so the roots of type D4, those are on the sculpture, which is in the back of the room. Uh, and uh, uh, these three uh, vertices are added together. Now, there are two ways to do this. One is to project them on the common axis. The common axis is a line. Yes, and you can take three vectors orthogonal on each other, project them on the line, that would give you one over root three, the length, yes? Or you can add them up, so these form the edges of a cube, then you'll get something root three times bigger than each of them. Here's the diagonal of the cube, yes? So depending on the situation, you either use three or one. Here, as you can see, you, you add them up, you get these numbers, one, two, three, yes? So uh, again, the statement is that if you take the affine root plus twice this plus three times this one, you get zero, yes? Exactly like on the D4, if you took this one once, this one twice, and these three, each of them once, you got zero, yes? So now, uh, when you, uh, uh, the, the, we, we shall work uh, now continuously with a vial group. You can see the vial group in action here. This is a permitohedron, yes? And you can see the period. The period is this big hexagon. It has 12 of these alcoves. Yes, now for us, the alcoves are scaled, but uh, for vial, they had length one which is why we sometimes take a power of the scaling. Now, uh, how, what was the proof of Weil's, uh, Weil's uh, formula for the order of the Weil group? As you can see, this 12, this period, which is this big hexagon here, yes, also appears here as a period of two times three, if you notice. So this is a parallelogram with edges two and three. Yes, these two and three are these numbers from here, two and three. Yes, as you can see. Uh, and uh, um, so the area of this parallelogram measured in uh, triangles, which are the alcoves, is two times three times two factorial, because this is a parallelogram, not a triangle. Yes, a two factorial is a number of triangles in a, in a parallelogram, in a unit parallelogram. Is this part clear? So you can see here that you have exactly these 12, 12 uh, alcoves, yes? So the number, once again, is one, two, three, times two factorial, and times, so one, which is the, if you had several ones, like here, for instance, for D4, you have four ones. That's a ratio between the, the, uh, uh, si the unit size of the root lattice and the unit size of the weight lattice, yes? Here for G2, since you have a single one, weights are roots, yes? Uh, there is actually a period here, I have a period of roots, which as you can see here, is basically the same as a period of weights, yes? Now, what you have here in the picture are these uh, uh, 
this one, you can recognize it. This is a vial vector rho. Yes, one. So this is a number of uh, essential path if you, want, if you have the smallest cutoff. So this is the smallest cutoff at which the, um, at which, uh, the uh, there is still something left here, the, the trivial representation, yes? So this is level zero. Remember, in physics, a level is the highest degree which remains. Here, this is a trivial representation. So if you continue here, you would get in this, uh, in this 1 over 12 of the total, in, this is a vial the principal vial chamber, and here you would get the highest, uh, highest uh, weights. Yes? So um, uh, if you move this in the origin, you get the trivial representation. Anyway, we have this one. And uh, remember, the rest is continued by reflection. And uh, I found the uh, reference for reflecting, which is a Katz-Walton formula. It is called, and we'll use it uh, in a fundamental way. Uh, as to the permutohedra, uh, do you see there are, there are uh, three types, three kinds of permutohedra. One is this big thing, then a hexagon, and then a two by two, yes? Uh, these correspond precisely to removing in turn one point out of this affine graph, yes? If you remove the affine point, you get the main permutohedra. Yes, this is, this is a vial permutohedron. And you recognize here it has two, uh, two roots. And remember, on a permutohedron, the permutohedron in the vial theory permutes the, uh, uh, the uh, simple roots, yes? But you can see at every vertex, for instance, at this vertex, that you, you have a long root and a shorter root. Yes, so uh, the neighborhood of every vertex has a uh, has a simple roots, which is what we're going to use. And uh, the others, now you can remove other points. For instance, if you remove the one in the middle, you'll get two separate points, yes? Which means uh, SU2 times SU2, Z2 times Z2, this is a rectangle, yes? And since this one is shorter, you'll get uh, a rectangle, not a square. Yes, and similarly, if you remove the three, you'll get the one to connect these, these two vertices connected by an edge. They have the same length. They give you the hexagon, right? Which is, so these, these are, this is a, the structure. They all come from the affine, uh, from the affine uh, uh, root. And the formula of uh, the continuum Procesi, which we should mention, William, uh, the continuum Procesi have shown that the angle uh, here between these uh, between these uh, simple roots as a proportion of the total is a product of the exponents over the product of the exponents plus one. So the products of the exponents plus one is another formula for the vial group. Uh, I hope that we'll be able to give a, an explanation for this because we count various things with it. Now, uh, this is, uh, so uh, once again, this is the, uh, this is a, a, a non-type one thing, which is the graph G2, which is, uh, which is quite uh, easy to see. We'll hide this now. And uh, um, uh, let us uh, prove now uh, our main series formulae, uh, which are the following. So, uh, first, uh, some elementary thing to remind you with tenderness of what you are doing in the high school. Uh, so this is a uh, what? Sure. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. So uh, if we, uh, thank you, we'll certainly reach the higher, higher. 
So this will be this will be the higher diagonal. You see, this would be the diagonal of the higher matrices over G two. Uh, the entries will be here just pairs of points on the diagonal, exactly like in the, in the usual case, except that the uh, involution, the, the star operation, will be replaced by something which is very crystallographic and which depends on everything. So this will be, if you want, as an analogy, this will be like functions on the real line as a set, yes, on which you have the very interesting Fourier transform. Then all of a sudden it has a group structure, you have differential operators and, and all that, yes? So you will have a very uh, intricate involution. So we're, we're going there, we'll go to the diagonal very soon. Uh, this, by the way, will be uh, also uh, what you see, uh, see here, let me put it uh, lower, as H, as uh, those numbers, do you see one and negative one? This would be a higher Hij, by the way. So exactly like you have Hij, which is one and a negative one, this one would have six ones and and a lot of negative ones, but let us concentrate now on the series. So if you have one over one minus Tu, this is a series of course one plus Tu. As I was uh, telling you, we'll, we'll uh, get elementary now. And uh, now what about uh, the uh, shifting the start? This we'll, we'll use. If you get here t to the k, u to the negative k over one minus t u, this one is t to the negative k, u to the negative k plus, uh, plus one plus t u and so on. Yes, so this way you can uh, start the series earlier. So this is a uh, start. You modify the start and uh, we'll use another uh, thing. If you multiply it here by U inverse over one minus TU, uh, this is going to be U inverse plus T uh, plus, uh, so U inverse times T to the zero, let's put it plus uh, t to the one plus uh, u t to the uh, plus uh, u t to the two and so on. So here you you have done a shift of the series. And now the series that we had for the the series for the essential fusion. Fusion series, yes. In here, G is a matrix. Uh, G1, GI are the matrices of tensoring with uh, of sigma I tensor dot on the graph, on the vertices of G, where sigma i are, uh, are the uh, uh, fundamental irreducible representations. And uh, we write uh, gi is equal to the sum over all x in the weights of uh, sigma i of uh, ux. And ux 
is written multiplicatively, so ux plus y is equal to uh, ux ui and uh, u negative x is ux star. So these are unitaries. And uh, now the series is uh, that now we have, we work in the uh, principal vial chamber with shifts T1, T2, and so on. So this is a principal vial chamber, and we have here T1 and T2. They are not necessarily equal, and so on. These are the shifts, and uh, these are shifts corresponding, corresponding to... to uh, uh, the I, to weights I. Fundamental weights I. Uh, you'll find that this is zero, and here is the first fundamental weight, second fundamental weight. Let's say for uh, SU2, SL2, just for reference, this one would be a single dot, and this one would be at 60 degrees, and it would go to a double dot. Yes, and here you'd have the empty. And uh, so our series will be written here, but... Um, As you see where there is a catch, so the series will be sum, so fusion, let's write it like this, or essential path. Is, uh, the series is a sum over the vial group, the subjacent vial group, the underlying vial group, uh, of uh, the sine of W times uh, um, the sine of W times uh, U vial of times the product or over all the J's uh, over I fundamental weight of W of I over 1 minus T I W of W of U I here, sorry, W of U I. And this is divided by the same but only with the numerator. What does such a series give us? The coefficient, how is it to be read? This, uh, just like the vial formula, it needs a user's guide. The coefficient of uh, T, uh, let's say, uh, T1 to the K1, T2 to the K2, 
and so on, is a function in the elements G case in the generating matrices So it's a polynomial function in the G case. And it, uh, it gives a matrix from, uh, uh, from uh, the matrix of tensoring. So this gives a matrix. of tensoring with the irreducible with a young well, let's call it Young Diagram, although we use it in general. Which is, uh, uh, I, which is the generator sigma. Highest weight irreducible in sigma 1, sigma 1 to the power k1, tens, I mean to the power tensor k1, tensor sigma 2 to the tensor k2, tensor and so on. So what the series does is really it subtracts, so the series subtracts lower order terms from uh, from uh, tensor products products which are products of generating matrices. So again, G1 corresponds to tensoring, G1 corresponds to tensoring with sigma, sigma 1. Uh, GK, GK corresponds to tensoring with sigma K. Yes, if you take uh, a power uh, G1 to the K1, G2 to the K2, and so on, this is tensoring. This corresponds to tensoring with sigma 1 to the power K tensor K1. Uh, tensor sigma 2 to the tensor k2. Yes, uh, this is a, these, these are paths. Uh, each gi is an, these are edges of the graph G. Uh, so if you take a matrix, the matrix of edges to some power, you get paths, yes? So these are paths. And this series retains out of these paths, it tells you exactly how to find the highest weight. Multiplicities in a big tensor product, yeah?
So now, um, we need to prove that, uh, that formula. And uh, the first thing is uh, the following. The formula is, uh, is uh, written uh, starting with the fusion one here. So this is the identity matrix. And here you have the generator, the generators. So this is, this would be G1, G2. And uh, uh, we don't want that. We want to transfer it. We want to shift it so that this is a vial vector rho. So here, it should start here with one. And here it should be zero. These are the mirrors. the vial mirrors. Yes, so remember that the fusion looks like this. You have rho, then you have w of rho, and you have here the same, but here you have minus one, you start with negative one, and so forth. Any questions? So, Okay, so we want to center it. And uh, we should mention here that the formula uh, makes sense. That's very important in the proof. Let me put it. This works. Um, on all uh, weights, by the trick that I was mentioning above, which is by starting earlier the geometric progressions. So, please, if you have any question, you should tell me there is a nice microphone here. Oh, microphone is there. Very good. Don't forget, turn it on a few seconds before you ask. So, okay. So, so uh, the formula, if you start early, yes, works everywhere, not just in one, in one, uh, uh, in the principal vial chamber. Now, in order to center it, you see we have there the trick, which uh, is a shift. Do you see? We can start it at some different point, yes? And with a shift, this means that use shift, use shift to, uh, to start at, uh, uh, at uh, negative one, uh, because the vial the vial vector has uh, to, to, uh, is, uh, has coordinates one, one, and so on. Yes, and uh, you can see that if we do that, uh, the best way is to convince yourself doing that. You just get rid of the numerator uh, in the left side. So this way you get rid get rid of numerator, just compare it with a shift there. Do you see, you put a U, U inverse, you have a W of UI in the, in the denominator, yes? And that way, if you start, uh, if you shift it, you, you, you'll get rid of the W of UI in the numerator. So you'll get now the series, a sum of, uh, of uh, W uh, of uh, epsilon uh, of W times the product of uh, I fundamental weight of one of uh, 
1 minus Ti Wi uh, W of Ui over the same numerator uh, denominator that we had before. Very good. And uh, now uh, we notice the following that uh, uh, this function is uh, um, so lemma uh, the the function the series or the the rational function let's call it the rational function. Uh, and then the series extended from extended from the rational function above is while antisymmetric. Uh, so that means that if you act with a vial vector, if you act with a vial group, you'll change uh, sign from one. Uh, if you act with a reflection, you'll change sign. So reflections change sign. Uh, by the way, you need the denominator. Uh, this should be a okay. Well, we'll we'll uh, we'll deal with that later. So now let's. Uh, so now we subtract the fusion, which also starts with. So the actual fusion, which should be the result of series, of the series, we subtract it. And what we'll know this way is that we'll, uh, we'll uh, get, get zero. At the at W of the vial group of uh, the vial vector rho, so at these points, because both starts with one and negative one, and it is still. Vile antisymmetric. And now uh, we use the following observation. Suppose so assume that that a function f from the uh, from the weights weight lattice. A Cartesian product with the vertices of our graph G into, uh, let's say, Z. As a matter is vile antisymmetric.
and is zero at the points of the form W of rho times the vertices of G, just like our difference. So it's zero in those points that are marked there. Then F is identically zero. So uh, the proof is the following. We uh, Okay, so the is violent, is symmetric, zero. Oh, and we need one more fundamental thing, which is that uh, that the uh, the function be uh, biharmonic. That's very important. And. Uh, then the function is zero. So these are the three hypotheses. And the proof is the following. Uh, now, let us call, uh, OK, so uh, F is biharmonic means that uh, F of uh, uh, F of uh, weight for any weight F of uh, X this is X in the weights uh, lattice F of X uh, And uh, sigma tends uh, alpha. So this is for is equal to f to the sum. So this is on the graph G. Uh, alpha is here in the vertices of G. If you have a vertex of G, you tensor here with some sigma. Uh, sigma is in the representations of the underlying G. This is a sum over all uh, I, over all uh, uh, Y in the weights of sigma. And this is with multiplicities of uh, x, f of x plus y and alpha. So what this means is that you have here, you graph G. Uh, you take uh, alpha is in the vertex of vertices of G. You take uh, sigma tens uh, alpha, so these are the neighbors of alpha on G uh, with respect to sigma tensoring with sigma, yes. While on the other side, so these are the weights of the weight lattice of G. On the other side, if you take this X, you can take X and then you shift it by all the Y's. Yes, X plus Y. Y is in the weights of uh, the same sigma. 
So remember you shift it with some weights, one, 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 and then two in the middle, something bigger. This is that mountain of weights. And uh, we know this for generators, but then inductively uh, one can prove it in general for any representation. We'll use it actually for, for irreducibles, but still. Um, now, uh, what we're going to do, you see this has a lot of neighbors here. And remember that if we uh, shift this with a vial vector, yes? So if you take this mountain of, uh, of uh, multiplicities, uh, it looks like a mountain, and you shift it with rho, and you shift it with W of rho and with sine plus minus, yes? What you're going to get is simply once and uh, negative once around, yes? Right? So what we're going to have this way is uh, now we're going to shift, shift all with, uh, with W of rho plus minus W of rho, where W is in the vial group. Let's put it here, epsilon of W. With W of rho, let's put it like this, W in W, and sine, and add with sine epsilon of W. Uh, what you're going to get this way is that F, you get F of the, uh, and now look, if you do this here, you'll get, uh, you get here F of, uh, um, highest so let's still put here zero where did we have sigma sigma is not in the representations but let's put here let's make sure that sig we choose sigma in the irreducibles of uh, g yes so we get f of the uh, sigma is in the reducible sigma is equal to sigma i. i is highest weight. So we get f of uh, i w of f of the sa sum of epsilon of, so we get here the sum of epsilon of W over the vial group, F of rho, a vial of I plus rho, uh, yes, and this is times uh, whatever we had before, alpha, And uh, this is going to be here equal to some uh, function. Is equal to the sum of uh, f of um, uh, x. So this is x plus w of rho, and this is going to be f of x, and uh, uh, 
So a sum of f of x and something which we're not really interested in. And now the observation is that, uh, yes, we have shifted. Uh, this is x plus w rho. This is a part which is important. And something. And this is, uh, so this is here, epsilon of w. And uh, what we need to know is we take now x is equal to 0. And uh, uh, this function here is uh, anti-symmetric. and localized at w of rho for w in the Weyl group. So it's localized exactly at those points where we assume that where where f is 0 by assumption. And uh, what we'll get this way is we have the function now, and we have the sum, so the sum of uh, f of um, w of i plus rho and alpha and the sum is here with a sign epsilon of w is equal to zero for any alpha in the vertices of G and any I, I. So the net result, so this means that you have here, we have the viral chamber, yeah, and for every i, we have here i plus rho, and uh, right here, this is for any i, i could be from zero and so on, so for any i plus rho, the, uh, the function here, the sum, the alternating sum, is zero. But our function was assumed to be alternating symmetric. Yes? So this gives, these give all the interior of uh, the vial, of the vial chamber. Yes, now on the walls, f is equal to zero because it's anti-symmetric. Now, remember, rho is the first point which is off the walls. Yes, so you can get it here for rho, you get it for all the points in the interior of the function. And uh, so you get that f, any alternating function has some value here, and then the alternating function reflections. Now, that's, these are exactly the, the things where you get f is equal to 0. 
Yes, and f is equal to zero if it's on a wall by, by anti-symmetry, by via anti-symmetry, so the lemma is proved now. And uh, all we have to notice is that, uh, is that our function satisfies the lemma, so our, uh, our function satisfies. Our difference, difference function satisfies the lemma, the lemma. And now, uh, in the last two minutes, the proof, proof of the root series from this at least the idea of it, and we leave it, uh, so leave it at this. So if, since we have this formula, the sum over W, so remember that the fusion uh, centered, centered at zero uh, is zero centered at zero, let's put it like this is given by the matrices sum of epsilon of w times the product of uh, one over one minus ti w of ui over some denominator. And uh, now, So this is a formula with a one here, negative one here, and so on. So now we're going, we move it, move it back with each, with each W prime of rho in turn. So you move it here in turn, we sign W prime, uh, epsilon of W prime for W prime in the Weyl group. So you move it back, but uh, now, uh, and uh, add up. Actually, you don't just move it back, you can, yes, you move it back, with that, and you uh, you add, and the idea is that you get uh, this way. Uh, uh, since there is exactly one minute left, I'm going to write the idea, and uh, we'll maybe we'll we'll have time for the details, so we'll leave the details to you. What you get this way is uh, you'll get this way the sum over W prime in W of epsilon of W prime times the sum over the Weyl group W. And this is uh, the product of epsilon of W times the product of one over one minus W prime of Ti times W of UI over denominator. But this, this is, this is exactly the sum, this is exactly the sum without epsilon, the sum of the denominator over one minus uh, Ti times W prime of W of Ui divided by the order of the Weyl group. Now the sum over the denominator, excuse me. So that this is, and this cancels, and you get the formula for uh, 
and this would be the, the w and w prime in in uh, so w let's write it here the sum over w double prime in the vial group where w double prime and w double prime is equal to w times w prime so so what would happen when you sum these terms, you shift them and you sum back, is you apply a, uh, a transfer, vial transformation to the variables Ti as well. So you reflect. So you get a product of two vial groups. This being a group, you get the same. And the coefficient that you get will cancel exactly this uh, denominator. So you get the sum exactly of 1 minus Ti times W of Ui, which is a much simpler formula which, which applies to roots. Yes, so, uh, so these are the proofs of the, uh, of the series formulae. And uh, we'll start uh, uh, next time to, uh, to find the diagonals, exactly what, uh, what was the question at the very beginning. Yes, we'll start the HIs in the case AN. And uh, from the HIs, uh, HIJs, a higher version of that, we'll build uh, matrices, the higher matrices. And then the action of these, which will be very crystallographic, I'm trying to reach as soon as possible that. Yes, so you'll have a lot of uh, very, very crystallographic things.